Hello YouTube, it's Captain George, your f favorite captain. Today I'm going to show you how to make a grouper rig that you can drift with and uh, catch the big groupers. We're especially talking about in deep water in the Gulf of Mexico, you know, 75 to 100 feet of water. So uh, some people call this a chicken rig, but uh, it really works well for catching big groupers. So what you need <clears throat> is uh, a three-way swivel. Okay, so th this three-way swivel that I have here is a size two. So a size two three-way swivel. And you're going to need uh, some monofilament line. This is a hundred pound test. This is a hundred pound test monofilament leader. Okay. Relatively inexpensive. So what I'm going to do, uh, and today I'm going to use an OT7 hook because we're going to use live bait on our grouper rigs and get ready for this a 16 ounce ledge sinker 16 ounce ledge sinker you think wow that's a lot of weight yeah well you're going to be using live bait you want to be able to keep it up and down even though there's a current or you know you have one or two foot seas. You want to be able to con control that live bait and not let it swim away. So 16 ounce ledge sinker. That, that's a big one. So you're going to need a big rod too. So. so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my leader and I'm going to get about four feet of leader here yeah. okay well first of all I'm going to uh, I'm going to do oh and you're going to need a crimping tool and this is a uh, one millimeter crimping crimps these are mini copper barrel crimps that's what they look like I'll show them to you so first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to do about 24 inches Okay. So I have about 24 inches there. I'm going to take the three-way swivel and I'm going to get me one of these copper crimps. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through. And it really uh, helps if when you cut your... Uh, Cut your leader is to cut it on an angle. So you have, I didn't do that this time, but generally cut it on an angle. So uh, it makes it easier to get through the crimp. So I'm gonna run my line, my leader, through that three-way swivel and then back through this barrel crimp. I'm gonna bring about a half inch through the other side. I'm going to pull this so it's leaves a little bit of a loop. This is okay. So I'm going to take my crimping tool. I'm going to go to where it says uh, an, uh, uh, a one millimeter, which is like the second setting on here. 
I'm going to crimp one end tightly, crimp the other end, okay. So that is, test it, make sure it's solid, okay. And then I'm going to need a, uh, okay, yeah. So this, this is going to be the end that goes to your rod. So I'm going to take another crimp out. Oh, now we got a bunch of them. <clears throat> take another crimp out. I'm going to make a small loop. Leave about a half inch, come through there. So this is the end that's going to attach to, a, to your uh, line coming out of your rod. So you can just have it so it just uh, snaps on. So when I go grouper fishing, Get that crimp in there. All right, group, grouper fishing. I'm going to test this. Always test your crimps. Up, oh, see, that one didn't work. I thought it was going to have a problem because I actually crimped it too much. So, no biggie. Cut this on an angle. Okay, start over again, get a fresh crimp out. Loop that through there again. Just like that. What I was going to say is, I always put um, on my grouper rods, on the end of the line, I put what I call a snap, so you can just, ah, that one's good, okay. So I got a little bit too much on the end there. I always leave a little bit, but that's a little bit too much, so. Okay, so that's going to go to the fishing pole. So I've got... I've got to add the one that goes to the weight. So I'm going to take off um, about two feet. Cut it on an angle. Okay. Okay. Get out another crimp. Run that through, then I'm going to take a look at this and I'm going to decide, okay, this one's going to go to the weight, that one's going to go to the thing. So I'm going to uh, run my leader through there and then back through the crimp. Make a little loop, not too big. Okay, get my crimping tool out. It takes a little practice using the crimping tool because ah, that's good. Once you get the hang of it, it makes things so, so much easier than tying knots. So this end, this end is going to be a little bit bigger loop for my weight. So I can take my weights on and off. So I'm going to have a loop that generally it's about two and a you can't if you make it too big no big deal but you gotta make it at least uh, close to three inches that way. Okay, so get my crimping tool again.
Okay, so I got this big loop. This is for the weight. So see, I can take my weight. Hopefully this works. <laughs> I like take my weight and squeeze the leader. And voila, my weight is on. Done fishing for the day. Don't want it flopping around. Take the weight off. Or sometimes you may want to chain, not too often, if it's just like dead still out there, no current between tides, and you want to go to a, like a 12 ounce or something, because I mean they make these, you know, this is like a 6 ounce here. So they make them in all sizes, 6 ounce, 8 ounce, but I like the 16 ounce, baby. Okay, so now the business end with the hook. So I'm going to take about, let's see, here we go, <clears throat> okay, take about 18 inches, cut it on an angle, by cutting it on the angle it leaves It leaves a um, leaves like a point. So run that through. Sometimes you have to push on it. Okay. Now I'm going to get out my OT7 hook, circle hook. And why do we use circle hooks? In the Gulf of Mexico, for one, it's the law. Because when you're bottom fishing for a fish like grouper, that's not a pelagic fish, it's a, you know, fish that's a bottom fish, snappers, groupers, you need to use a circle hook. And these hooks, um, if for some reason, like you catch a big shark, and you're not able to unhook it and you cut the line, these things dissolve after a few days. So it doesn't harm the fish if you don't bring it aboard, you know. So connecting my hook with the crimp. This way that fish can swim around, swim around, make a ruckus. But he's not going to get loose. So once again with my crimp. Test it. <clears throat> nice. Okay. So now I'm going to attach it to my rig. So as you can see, this goes to the rod. So here, my weight's going to be down here. You know, it's about a good foot, foot and a half. And this way, the fish will be basically my live bait. I like to use pinfish if I can get them. Live pinfish, sardines. Sand perch work very well. And people say, sand perch? What's a sand perch? Well, a sand perch is, some people call them squirrel fish. So here we are. Here's the grouper rig. Weight down here. Fish swimming off to the side with the three-way swivel. Easily attached. So I'll show you what I mean by easily attached. So what I put when I get ready to go fishing and I get my grouper rods out, I have a snap like this. So I can just, okay, I'm out there on the place where I want to be. You take the end with the small loop if I can find it okay here it is okay so 
I'm leaving pretty good, you know, two feet away from the business here. Uh, the less tackle you can expose to the fish, the better. When a grouper are hungry, they don't care. So, see, I attach that, snap it on. Got my rig done for the day. Take the rig off. Always close these snaps so they don't get caught on something else. Let me put this away. Yeah. And you know you want to use a... Uh... Oh. So, get my rig together. Now, an easy way to store these, just gather them up like that, and uh, buy the cheapest sandwich bags at your grocery store or Walmart. Put that rig in there. Make up four or five of these. Bingo, you're ready to go. You're ready to go. Handy. Bring plenty of these with you. I mean, once in a while you're going to lose one of these. You know, you might catch a 150 pound shark that you don't want to keep. Or who knows? But, uh, okay. So, you know, you need to know in Florida, you need to have a copy of your fishing regulations and you need to have this on the boat with you so you can identify the ship the fish I was gonna say the ship you can identify the fish get familiar you know with the snappers and the groupers and how many you can keep how many you can't keep what the limit for your boat is uh, because the fines if you don't have a Florida fishing license and uh, you don't know you keep keep a fish that you're not supposed to keep and you get stopped